Hello, welcome back. We are going to try this solo scenario one more time. This time I picked orange, and as promised, I have my dial that makes everybody happy. And uh, I did randomly select my three. Uh, we're gonna grab four of these right now. One, two, three, four, and I wanted to do some quick analysis. Uh, some of you may have not watched that last video that had a little bit of analysis discussion in it. And that was the water is in one of these four corners, three, four. And um, the suggestions were, being, were coming in on how exactly are we going to beat this? Because obviously we're dying and we're dying before we even finish the second quest. Uh, we know that the uh, first quest is on tile number four. So either of those two over there or those two over there. And we have found that both times. So we've made it to quest two both times we played, but then we die. And somebody suggested that we just keep staying at camp. So we go out. So on day one, for example, go out and just explore this and then come back, right? So that would be, you know, one, two, three stamina out and three stamina back, that kind of thing. And just keep doing that until we revealed all the tiles that are at least around our starting space. And then and only then do we venture out into the corners. I think it's a fair suggestion. And it's probably like what we would do in real life, right? I don't think we would just blindly go one direction. Um, but here's my thing, and I, I've been responding to everybody with the same thing. Um, well, where's the water? The water is way here in the corner, and we know this. So what good is it to come back to camp every day? Why would I not just go straight to where a water potentially is, and then to where the other water is, and then go back to camp? And, and so these are the blue ones. So the way you uh, play this game is you shuffle the red deck, it goes on the bottom, then you shuffle the blue deck and they go on top. These blue cards are your night cards that are a little simpler. And when I say simpler, meaning they're not as hard on you. But just taking a quick look at these, you can see here you have to spend a water or you suffer a damage. And then there's two food and then another water. So in the first four nights of the game, you're going to be hungry and thirsty if you do not uh, find a water or food. Because we will have a water or food and a food to start the game, one of each. But by the time the fourth night comes around, we will have two damage. We will have a water damage and a food damage, assuming we never was able to find anything. So when you guys suggest to me that I save my stamina, uh, only explore one tile and then run back to camp. My issue here is these blue cards are very lenient on us. Um, I didn't like peek at all of them, but I'm pretty sure that there's not even like, um, you know, for example, this one here doesn't even make you draw a threat card. This one doesn't either. Uh, this one does. Uh, this one actually does, as, I'm sorry, this one does if you're not at a fire. Uh, this one, if you're not at a fire. And then here, uh, nothing happens. So two out of the four don't even punish you for, be, for being away from the fire. But two of them do. So the only thing I gain by coming back to camp is I get to avoid the punishment of the threat card from two of these. But the point I'm, I guess I'm trying to help others to understand is whether or not you're near the fire has no bearing on the fact that you need a water. So um, this game is about finding the water. And um, it gets worse. And, and I know this because we've played two games now, but there's some in here, like there's another water one. Uh, but here's what I was getting at, is there's someone here that just discards water. You don't actually get damage, but if you do have water, you discard it. And uh, I'm just going to shuffle it off camera here, but um, so uh, it's a real tricky thing. So like even after you find the water, there's no guarantee you're going to be able to hold on to it. Because once you get into those red cards, um, it's going to discard your water and your food pretty fast. So um, 
I don't know what the right strategy is. I'm, I'm still insisting that this game is easier with two players that are cooperatively working together. Um, but, you know, you could also argue that it wasn't designed to be cooperative. And uh, in some respects, it wasn't. So, anyways, I'm not going to waste too much time. Let's try the strategy of exploring and coming back. I believe that as long as we have blue knights, we should go all out. We should go as far as we can and, and just camp away from the fire. And then once we get to the red cards, then we worry about being near the campfire. Um, that's my thoughts. And you might see me do a little bit of both. But here's the one thing I think everybody agreed with me on is that I'm spending a lot of time visiting landmarks and I don't need to do that. The water is the priority, not the landmarks. Nothing else is priority, just the water. And then of course we need food as well, but we seem to be finding that pretty decently. Okay, enough of that. Here's our three projects. We can make the tomahawk, which was okay. Um, it gives you a plus one, if I remember, and if you rolled a 10 or more, you actually do two damage. The bola, we never made that. And I think we made the spear, but I can't remember what the spear does. I think it lets you reroll their die or something like that. Um, or maybe your own. And then as far as the four, we have Helen Foster, head of surgery. So I did find the exact spot. There's a, a spot in the rule book that says that if you take physical damage, which is what this is, um, it doesn't, it's like breaking your arm. It's not something you can easily heal. So somebody pointed out that even though this is three stamina, um, this ability is one of the few abilities, if any, maybe my only ability in my game that um, can heal. So that's what makes Helen Foster pretty awesome. So I think in a multiplayer game, she would be great to have as one of the characters. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe maybe having her is nice, but if she's busy spending half of her stamina healing somebody, somebody else still has to go gather the food. That's, I think, the issue I have with this. Is her stamina, fine. She's spending three, but that's half of her actions. Um, okay, here's one that I thought was interesting. The soldier. If your die is showing a one to three, you could treat it as a 12. So if you roll poorly, um, it goes to a 12, and I think... What's useful about this is that um, the number of misses that you have gets reduced by three. So if you had to roll an eight or less to miss, uh, now the one, two, and three is no longer a miss for you. Um, it's pretty interesting. I do like him. Uh, the bouncer, you may spend poison, savage, or stone, or wood as if it were another resource. I'm not interested in that one. And then we got our cook again, which gives us two meat, or two food for one meat, which I still think is not a bad deal, even though we didn't use him at all the first time we had him. Um, you know, I, I really don't know. I mean, maybe I'll take the doctor. Let's do that thematically. It was always the one I liked the most anyways. Um, I do agree that the doctor does help heal things that normally can't be healed, so we'll do the doctor. All right, I'm gonna just set these off to the side. I'm gonna focus on the fact that we have the doctor and these are our resources. By the way, that's dirty water. We have clean water at the start of the game. So I'm gonna set those aside. Oh, a um, couple other things. Uh, somebody mentioned that the beasts and the monsters are two different things, and I agree. So I'm going to start treating it that way. A monster would be this one, a beast would be that one. And if you were to flip these over, I think those are red and these are blue. So we're gonna treat them as different types of tiles. And gosh darn it, there was another rule I was going to uh, clarify. Somebody had mentioned, and I thought it was a, a wonderful suggestion or rule, and I don't remember it now. So. I, it will come to me. I, I promise it will. Um, okay, so back to our scenario, cry for help. Uh, basically, we found a journal. It's 1972. Uh, they're saying they're heading towards a plume of smoke, and we have to investigate Landmark 1. Okay, we already know Landmark 1 is in one of the four tiles because we 
uh, the tiles with the number four on it, because we found it before, actually, both games. So uh, I have 12 stamina. So I'm gonna move this up to 12. Okay, uh, we have full health with my arrow pointing directly to that and my tiny Tim Gimpy guy here sort of was. Okay, we're good. Um, all right, so I'm gonna spend, I think, well, since our camp is sort of like leaning towards the left, we'll go left. And I'm gonna do as was suggested. So I'm gonna come out and spend one stamina to go there. Then I'm gonna spend one stamina to reveal the top tile here. And we got ourselves two stone and a beast. All right, so I'm gonna lay those there and the beast. Now, um, my thoughts and reaction to it are that um, we don't need stone at the moment. I mean, it's nice, but we don't need it. The beast might yield us some food, but we're gonna keep going. So um, that was a uh, stamina to do that scouting action. And now I'm gonna spend one more stamina. We're gonna go down to nine, and we're gonna flip this tile here. And we got another beast and a lot of empty desert. Okay. So, I'm at nine stamina. They said that uh, you get at least six a night. So we want to get down to at least six stamina before we call this a day. And the other thing that's important is you can never go above 12. I don't know if I mentioned that before. So while you can save your stamina, you could theoretically waste actions, right? Because if you didn't spend enough on this turn and you went back to camp, you would then cause uh, actions to be thrown away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, let's go explore these two. So I'm gonna go eight, seven, stamina-wise, and then six, five. We're just gonna reveal it all. So here's six, and here's five. And what's interesting is we're discovering a lot of nothing. Um, it's pretty typical of a desert. All right, so we get that, and then we have another beast. Goes there, and there's a pyramid. And so I'm at five. So now the suggestion is that I should go four, three, two, and go back to camp. And just save the two stamina for another day. Whereas my thoughts are is I should go four, three, two, and get that explored this turn. So um, the only thing I avoid by going to camp is drawing that threat card. Um, it is possible I get more stamina for being near a fire. Um, it, uh, you know, sometimes it says you get a, a good sleep, right? And then you get more if you're at a fire, uh, less if you're not. So there is the potential that I can get some help there. But uh, I think, I'm sorry for those of you that say I make grave mistakes. I'm going to go four three, two, and we're gonna get this explored right now. So four, three, two was our movement, and then we're gonna go down to one to explore that three tile. And it's just nothing but the wood. So we got the wood, and I'm actually gonna spend my last stamina. So I am gonna to go to zero, even though folks told me not to. I'm not a good listener, my mama always said so as well. And We found, I mean, is that a food source? I mean, it's a cactus, really. But, um, so now we're at zero stamina. And yeah, let's just deal with whatever comes our way. All right, so here it comes. 
Each survivor must spend a food or suffer a damage. Well, we have a food, so we can do that. And then it says we get eight stamina, so that's good. There was no bonus for nearing, being near a fire. And then place wood anywhere that there's spent, there is no wood token. And if not at a fire, draw a threat card. So those of you that made the suggestion are already saying, see, I told you so. So I'm gonna draw a threat card. And it says ongoing. Um, heat, at the end of your turn, discard this card. If you're not at a landmark, discard one water. Ooh, I think we played this wrong last time. I think we played this where, oh, at the end of your turn, discard this card. If you're not at a landmark, discard. Okay, we played it right. Um, so I think that means at the end of our next turn, we're gonna discard, we have to be next to a landmark or we discard a water. Well, that could be a problem because we do have a landmark here. So I, I don't know if I wanna waste a whole turn just moving two spaces. Uh, I think I want to go up and get that food, get this explored, and then maybe we'll see if there's a landmark between those tiles. Um, let's go for it. All right, so I'm at eight stamina. I'm going to go seven, six, and then five, which will be the move and, and grab. And we got our food back. So seven, six, five. So at five stamina, I'm going to reveal this three. And look at that, we got lucky. We found the water. Um, so there's that, and then there's a beast. So I'm sitting at five stamina. I'm gonna do the move and grab for four. And we actually got two. And remember, per the rules that I got wrong in the first video, this counts as one for our carry limit. So, um, at four stamina, and then I'm gonna go three to go into the water, and then I believe it's one action per, I think you have to do like an investigate when you're at a water source. That's how you get the water. I've never found a water before. I'm so excited. <laughs> now I actually don't know what the rule is. Um, When performing a gather action, the survivor does not gain the water source and instead flips the token. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, when we found this landmark, there was actually a, a water token that would have been here. So uh, for, we could have done a move and gather, right? So I'm doing a move and gather, so we flip that over and we get a water. Like so. All right, so I'm going to check one last thing. And it says it's unlimited. So we can perform 10 gather actions to get 10 water if we want it. That's even in the rule book as an example. So um, we are currently at three action points. We have to stay on this in order to uh, avoid the uh, evaporation card, right? We have to stay on a landmark. And we're on a landmark where the water source is, in fact. I'm really quite pleased with that. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to go down to two, and we're going to just do the move and gather on this beast. And what do we find? We found a scorpion, 68. Or something that looks like a scorpion. Let's put it that way. It is a scorpion. Uh, it only has one health. This enemy deals sickness instead of, you know, regular damage. And it gives you a meat and a poison. So it's an 8 and a 10. Uh, we do have to roll for this. I'm trying to find my dice. And I'll just move this over here. All right, so we got a 3 and a 1. Well, we missed and so did he. So that's fine. And his 1 means he's moving... He's supposed to move off the map, and he can't do that. So it says we get to move him a different direction, so I'm just going to move him up there. And I'll put this down here for now. 
And so then I'm going to go down to one uh, stamina to go back. I'm moving and gathering again. So I'm going to get another water. And then I'm actually going to spend one more action to get yet another water, and I'm back to zero. So right now our situation is, is we have four water and then these two. So that's six items we're carrying right now. Okay, so let's see what happens to us. Each survivor spends a food or suffers a damage. Food gone. Each survivor gains seven stamina, not a lot. And then each survivor not at a fire draws a threat card. So, so yes, those of you telling me I should have stayed at the camp, can say I told you so again, but I have water and you don't, if we were playing it your way. So I don't know which is better, but I'm okay with drawing these threat cards right now. And then this one um, goes away. So doing that, and here we go. Sunstroke. If you move more than four spaces on your turn, you must either spend a water or suffer a thirst damage. If you end your turn at a landmark, discard this card. So this is interesting. Um, we can't move more than four spaces. Well, I guess we're gonna recharge our stamina a little bit here. So that part's good. Um, so what do we do? Landmark one is in uh, number four. So what I think we're gonna do, or should do, um, is explore that last four tile just to make sure that that's not it. I know it's the mistake we talked about that I did earlier, but we found the water now. So the next priority is to find this landmark. So, uh, and then the beauty of this is I can move one, two, and then three, four, right? So one, two, and then flip this for one stamina. And we found the landmark. I'm not sure if we've ever been to that one. I can't remember. So that's where the memory aspects of this comes in. It feels very much like Seventh Continent with the way you have to redo a mission and then you, you have more memorized than the last time. Um, so, uh, but the difference though is the tiles change, whereas Seventh Continent, they're exactly the same. Um, so anyways, that was three of my stamina, two to move, and then one to explore. But remember, the card just says move. I can't move more than four spaces. So the uh, this uh, reveal didn't count. Then I'm going to spend uh, two to go back to the water hole, and I'm going to get another water, because uh, I can always do a move and gather as my uh, action there. Now, it would be nice, actually, to have gone to this landmark, because I'm curious to see what it does. But um, at the moment, that's not our goal, and we were limited by this sunstroke, which I'm going to go ahead and eliminate because uh, uh, we didn't have that issue, and it allows us to discard the card. So I'm going to do that, and it's nighttime with two stamina left over, by the way. So here we have to spend a water. Well, guess what? We have five of it. So that part's not a problem. Uh, if we're at a fire, we gain nine. So yes, I don't have the fire. So I'm gonna gain seven. And then uh, we draw a project card. Well, that's cool. We got a torch. All right, and then it says, move each monster token two spaces towards the nearest survivor. So this is the distinction. A beast is not a monster. If there are no normal monster tokens on the map, spawn one monster token at the lowest numbered landmark. Well, this could be a problem, but uh, we have landmark 24 here. I know it's off camera for you. This is 34, and then this is not an actual number, this water source. So, question for the rules folks. Was I actually at a landmark? This one says, at the end of your turn, discard this card if you're not at a landmark. I don't think that water source is a landmark. There's no number. So um, I have to discard one water for the last turn and one water for this turn. 
So two water lost. Um, and then this one, not being able to move more than four spaces, uh, I can only discard that at a landmark as well. So I think I have both of these still with me because I'm not at a landmark. Uh, now the beast itself is summoning at location 24. Per the card I just drawed. Drawn. Drawed. Um, from the hills of the Appalachians, I think, with the way I just spoke there. Um, so that... I think... I think that's the right interpretation. I don't think that water source is a landmark. So I still have both of these and I'm suffering from them. So now that leads me to a dilemma. I only have two water tokens and I have this one, which is one, two, three, four, five, six stamina away. But I can go there, I can even explore it and then um, get rid of these two cards. By moving more than four, I would lose a water uh, but uh, I would be able to discard both of these cards and stop losing water. The other thing I can do is just take a bunch of water and start coming back to the camp. And I'm going to do that. Um, the drawback, like I know for sure I can get rid of my cards if I go here. But the drawback to it is, is I'm way over here and we know that I got to go to the other end of the map to get past quest one. It's just the wrong direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend... One, two, I'm spending three stamina, so I'm down to six. And I'm gonna get three more water. And I don't even know if that's enough, but I'm gonna do it. So I got three more water, four, five, six. I'm at six items. If I were smart, maybe I should spend even more. Um, but I wanna find a landmark, so I'm gonna spend now uh, two more stamina, so I'm down to four, to go one, and then the second one is to reveal this. And look at that, nothing but open desert. So reassessing, I need to get all the way down to here to get rid of this thing. Otherwise, I have to go past my camp, and it's the rest of the landmarks are over here. There's no landmarks anywhere, except for where that monster is or in the opposite direction. So I do want to do it, but what I'm learning now is I'm going to have to eat a lot more uh, water because of these cards. So... I'm going to spend three, another action to go back and gather. So I'm going to get another water. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm spending all my actions. I'm going down to zero and I'm going to get three more water. So I'm truly at my carry limit and it's all water. I don't want to come back to this spot. So there we go. All right, so it says if you're not at a landmark, you discard a water. So I have to discard a water at the end of my turn. That's one of the reasons I did that. I still have a blue here, and that says I need to discard a water. So I'm gonna discard another water there. And I get eight stamina. And I get to place a stone feature anywhere where there's a stone. I don't think I took any stone anywhere. No, I didn't. Um, I'm wondering, what did I do there? <laughs> did I really do that? Instead of this? Okay, sorry about that. And... Move each monster spoke in two spaces. So I would move one, two. Yep, and that's it. Okay, so now it's our turn. And can we get there in eight? One, two, three, four. 
five, six, seven, right? So I can get there in seven. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, um, so that gets us all the way down to one stamina left. Uh, I do have to spend a water because of my sunstroke condition. Uh, I'm gonna spend the one more. Let's just explore 24. I wish I had these memorized, but I don't. I think 24 does get us something decent. Oh yeah, we have to roll a die. And on a 10 to a 12, we get the, the, the special uh, drink more Ovaltine decoder ring. And I did not get it, I rolled a seven. So um, that's okay, we at least know what it is now. And yes, I'm out of stamina again, which is what somebody felt is my grave mistake. But uh, I do get to get rid of these cards finally. So I'm gonna go do that. And here we go. Each survivor spends a water. I wonder how staying at camp would have paid off for the people who didn't have any water. Seven stamina. And then we roll a die to determine an icon and then those features replenish. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I roll a four. So it would be a stone icon. There's no stone removed from the map yet. And each survivor not at a fire draws a thread card. I think we knew that was coming. Spawn one monster token in your space. So that's gonna be a problem. And we get an 85. So 85 is a feral man. He hits you pretty easily. He has two health points. Resources cannot be spent to reroll dice. He gives you a pelt. Okay, so no matter what, we get one attack in here. I got a 12, he only got a five, so I hit him. So he's one out of two. And then I'm just looking at the dial here for with a five. Um, he's moving where this beast is. Okay, so it's our turn. We have seven stamina. And here's the thing. I was actually gonna go to where that beast was because we need food. We have the water, but we don't have any food. And so I thought that if I went to that beast, might be able to get some food from it. And then we can get back to the campfire. But there's been no guarantee that I can kill a beast. So then the thought is, is I have two weapons I can build here. One is a stone and a wood, and the other one is a stone and a wood. So I don't rem I remember what the tomahawk does, but I can't remember what the spear does. Um, so I'm looking at our path. I can easily get a wood. Actually, I already have two wood. Um, the stone, I would have to get back to the campfire, and then I can get a stone. So... Here's my thoughts. I'm looking here and I see a wood, and then I see a stone, and then up here I see another beast. So I think I want to go one more night without food, and then uh, get to the campfire, and then grab that stone there and make a weapon. Then with the weapon, I can go get the beast and see if I can get some food. So let's try that. I don't think I want to mess with this monster, because uh, he can hit us pretty easily. And then whatever that beast is, I'm just going to have to ignore for now. Now, um, I can get this along the way because you could do a move and gather as you're going. So I'm gonna go one, two. So that puts me down to five stamina. And we get another wood. Uh, and then one, two, three, four. And we have one stamina left. So I'm gonna stop there and actually stay at camp. Hey, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> First time I've done that in like ever. So uh, it makes sense. I'm at one stamina, that makes sense to stay. And uh, just a quick intermission. If it weren't for this being properly behind, I would not know that I'm at full health right now. I mean, I just can't tell over here. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> just joking, folks. Um, so thank you. And, uh, oh yeah, so let's do the nighttime. We have one stamina we're going to carry over. And uh, each survivor discards two water. So one thing, folks, um, when it says discard, I'm assuming it means I can't just put it on my space and then pick it up later. I think it means uh, it's truly gone. So doing that, um, each survivor turns one of their damage to physical damage. Hey, the good news, I have no damage anywhere. Well, I don't know. I guess because these are backwards, I can't tell. But I think, at least from this one, I don't have any damage, so I don't have to convert anything. And I only get six stamina, so the fire didn't do squat for me. But I get six. And then it, the fire still didn't do anything for me. Move each monster towards, oh, three spaces towards you if you're not at a fire. Okay, fine, it did something for me. So that monster will stay where it is. Actually, both of them will. Okay, we only have seven stamina next day. Um, I think I'm gonna stick with my plan. So we're gonna go uh, one, two, and get this stone, right? So the stone, oh, we actually have two stone. So then I'm going to, so that was one, two, and then I'm going to uh, make this tomahawk. So I'm going to spend one stamina for that. And it's a wood and a stone. So I'm going to hand these in and I'm going to have one of each left over. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to be organized here so it's easier to, to uh, go between games. So, and of course now I can't find a stone. Oh, come on. There's, there we go. So I have one of those left, and then I need to find card 95. Done. So now the question is, is should I make a spear? I mean, I actually have enough for another weapon. This is the one that gives you plus one to your combat rolls, and if you get a 10 or higher, you actually do two damage instead of one. Um, I like that, just because um, two damage is really powerful. Um, how many weapons can I have? Like, so if I had a spear and let's say that added to my damage, do I get to use both? Oh, I never encountered this yet. Um, sorry, I am looking for the rule on that. I'm assuming it would be Okay, so the craft action. It doesn't say, at least not under craft. So I'm gonna go look at combat real quick. If a survivor has multiple weapons, they can use all of them. However, the combatant can only use each item once per combat. Interesting. So you can only use your item once per combat. That's news. So if I use this tomahawk to add plus one to my combat rolls, is that only once per combat? Um, it says if a survivor has multiple weapon items, they can use all of them. However, the combat combatant can only use each item once per combat. All right, rules lawyers. I'm confused. 
right here. Likewise, if a survivor has multiple weapon items, comma, they can use all of them. So that's great. We could make another weapon and use all of them. However, the com this is a new sentence, the combatant can only use each item once per combat. So if I use this tomahawk to get plus one to my combat rolls, am I then... That guy who gave the review on BGG and said these rules were crisp and clear, I think he smokes pot, and somebody should check him. Um, this is not clear. So it says plus one to your combat rolls. See that? That's plural. So that means I have to use it more than once. If I'm only using this once in my combat, it would only be to my combat roll singular. So there's already a problem. Next, when you deal damage, I mean, this I could see maybe you can only use this once, the bottom part. But to me, this should be usable the entire combat. Um, and, and since that's plural, that means more than one combat roll. Um, Because it says the combatant can only use each item once per combat. The other thing is, is that however was a new sentence. So is that so if I have two weapons, does that mean I can only use this once per combat if I have two weapons? And so by having one weapon, I can then use it the entire combat? Uh, that's my other thing. Uh, to me, there's complete ambiguity on this, and it's not clear at all. Um... Reading this card tells me I get to do this every combat round, and so therefore I'm using it more than once per combat. Uh, this, however, being immediately after if a survivor has multiple weapon items, tells me that that's related to having multiple weapon items and not just because you have a weapon item. Likewise, if a survivor has multiple weapons, they can use all of them. However, the combatant can only use each item once per combat. I think that is restricted to when you have multiple weapon items. I'm going to go with it. I'm sorry, folks. It's no... It's just not clear. So I will not make a second weapon because then I can use this one the entire combat. Uh, if I made a second weapon, I'd only be able to use this once during a combat. And that, that stinks. Sorry for the silence. I'm, there's a combat section in the, uh, in the rules clarification, and so I'm just reading it now, and um, it's not answering anything either. Yeah, there's nothing... Here. So maybe um, I'm going to have to post that on Board Game Geek, and, or maybe somebody else already beat me to it. But uh, anyways, thank you for your patience there. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to only make one weapon item because now I can use that all the time. Whereas if I made this, I would not be able to. Um, however, this is not a weapon, it's a defense item, and I can make that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend another stamina. I'm down to three. And I'm going to make this bola here. And, uh, sorry, we were supposed to draw another one. There we go, we got a leather armor one. But I'm going to make this bola for my one stone. And that's card number 94. So I'm going to grab card 94. After rolling dice, 
in combat, you may discard this card to apply a minus two to an enemy die. So I guess we can use it once to save us from an enemy die. All right, um, no worries there. So having three stamina left, I'm gonna spend one, two stamina, and we're gonna go up to that beast and see what it does for us. And we got a 65, which I think was the camel. I think we ran into this before. It's a camel, it can't hurt us, but it'll give us two meat and two pelts. The two pelts can make us a leather armor. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll. Uh, he can't hurt us. Uh, we rolled a one and he got a six. So the six would move him here. So I'm gonna move the camel there. All right, and then I'm gonna spend my last stamina and we're gonna chase this camel down, see if we can hit it with something better than a one. And so I rolled a 12 and with the tomahawk's ability, if I rolled a 10 to a 12, 10 or higher, I could deal plus one damage. So I'm gonna do two damage to the camel and kill it right now and I get two meat and two pelts. Okay, so um, one, two, one, two. So two pelts and two meat is four. This is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we actually have eleven items. I will go ahead and lose this uh, wood but I don't lose it per se. What happens is, is I just put it on my space. I just dropped it. But the camel is done. So we're gonna move that out of the way. And my turn is over. So we can now go back to camp and make some food. So let's hope that we don't get any food damage this round. Uh, your survivor either spends one food or suffers one food damage. So I'm gonna suffer one food damage with the appendage, the uh, amputated arm. Each survivor gains seven stamina. And each monster moves two spaces. So one, two, one, two. Spawn one monster in a token space adjacent to the tribe leader. So we will do that. And uh, I'll spawn it behind us. Okay, next turn. We have seven stamina. I'm gonna spend one to flip this. And we revealed a landmark and a stone. I'm gonna spend two to go there. So I'm at five. And I'm gonna spend four, three to go there. Um, and then I've never cooked before. So cooking meat is an action. So I will cook this meat for one action that turns it into food. So now I'm down to two. And then I'm gonna cook this meat to turn it into food. That puts me down to one. And then I'm gonna do what's called a uh, recover, which is a healing action. So we're gonna consume one of our food to uh, resolve our hunger. So the food goes away, but now we're back to full health. And we're at camp, and I have one stamina left, so I will stop for the night. Uh, each survivor either suffers one sickness damage or spends one food and one water. Um, we don't have ability to cure sickness real easy in this game, so I'm gonna do the food and water, but that hurts. Uh, it hurts a lot, actually. And we're down to two water. That also hurts. Uh, we're at fire, so we gain nine stamina. So we're up to ten stamina. And each fire burns out unless a survivor at the fire spends one wood. We happen to be at the fire and we have one wood, so I will do that. Uh, that was also lucky. Uh, move each monster two spaces towards a survivor. So one, two, one, two, and one, two. They are all coming to the camp. Next day, we have 10 stamina. 
We are sitting on two water and no food, but I think we need to get, we have to get to our landmark one, which we know is in one of these two tiles. So I think for lack of uh, imagination, we're just gonna run for it. So I'm gonna go one, two, and let's reveal this tile for three. And I really like that token because this token is either food or wood. I'm sorry, food or water. And then I'm gonna spend, uh, you know what, I'm just gonna go to it. So one, two, three. So that's uh, gonna put me down to five and uh, we're revealing that. And we got a food. So we actually needed a food, so I'm very happy. And then I'm gonna go four, three. And let's reveal this two tile without destroying everything on the map. And we revealed another food. And a wood. And then I'm gonna go two and we're gonna reveal this one for one. So I'm down to one stamina. And unfortunately, folks, the landmark we're looking for is in this tile way the bloody back there. All right, so I have one stamina left. And let's not forget to get our beast out. And another stone. So I'll spend my last stamina to get closer to where we need to go. Um, okay, so we are camping outside of a fire. Each survivor discards one food or one meat. Uh, we have a food, so it's gone. Uh, each survivor spends one water or suffers a thirst damage. So we just lost another water. Each survivor gains eight stamina. And then each survivor not at a fire or not adjacent to a monitor monster must spawn one monster adjacent to them. So another monster comes out and it has to be next to us. So I'm going to put it there. And it's our turn. Okay, so we're out of food. I don't know if I want to go at the beast. I think we want to just get this landmark and get out of there and head back to camp. Also, we're low on water, so getting back to camp, yeah, I think that's our best move. So I'm gonna do one, two, three. And we got a stone. And move this closer. And then four reveals our goal. All right, so uh, we're down to four stamina. This is two, so two stamina and then third goes there. So one, two, three, we're down to one stamina. And then we're gonna spend our last stamina. No, I'm not, yeah. We're gonna spend our last stamina to investigate. I really wanted to go here first, but I wanna get this timer started. Cause remember we have a timer. We, we know, cause we've done this before. So uh, we're gonna investigate landmark one. And we know that that says resolve exploration card three. See, there's a gem. If we would have had the gem item, uh, that would have actually let us go to, to number two, which is uh, what would have been really cool if we'd have been able to resolve number two. Um, uh, but we don't have the gem item. I don't remember what gave us the gem item, but there's a gem item. And, and when you see the, uh, the gem symbol, which is what that is, um, we would have been, instead of resolving card number one, which says go to number three, we would actually find card number two in the deck and do whatever that says instead. Um, but card number three is the stone tablet. When you resolve a card that has the word hieroglyphs, resolve the card two numbers higher. And that includes the, um, the, uh, the pyramid, which also has a gem on it, by the way. See, there's a gem there. 
and see the word hieroglyphs. So this is card 24. Remember, we've been trying to roll a 10 to a 12. So now that we have this thing, if I go here again, I, I resolve card 26 instead of 24. And, um, and whatever's there, I would get to resolve that instead of trying to roll a 10 to a 12. So that's, that's how this game goes. Or I can do my gem thing, and then I would do card 25 instead of 24. So there's, um, uh, it's super cool. This is the part I love about the game, and I'm frustrated because I'm too busy trying to stay alive. <laughs> but um, the uh, having this stone tablet, the word hieroglyphs, maybe you already understand, and I'm just being too over-explaining on this, but see, uh, there it says hieroglyphs. So instead of 24, we would do a card two numbers higher. So we would not read or do this card at all. We would put this card down and then go find card 26 and read what that says instead. And we get to do that because we have this stone tablet. And if I wanted to, I could still do card 24. Uh, it's just, it's my choice. But I don't get to see what card 26 is first before I make that choice. So, you know, it's a little hokey there, but um, then look at this, it even says White Skull. I mean, this pyramid has it all. You can, you can actually go to like multiple places here. The gem would take me to card 25. This takes me to card 26. And then if I have that White Skull Decipher thing, that would actually take me to card 27. So there's actually three different cards, four different cards I can resolve at the pyramid. It's pretty insane. And so, uh, you got a lot of stuff you can you can do there. So that pyramid is a pretty important landmark. Anyways, we got this stone tablet. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items uh, in our inventory. And let's go to the night. I'm sorry, no, we were, we were resolving our quest. So uh, it says advance to stage two. So stage two. Uh, so basically, we're going to shuffle all the Tier 2 Knight cards into the deck, discard the top card, and then uh, once we get to the zero cards left, uh, we advance to Stage 3. So, just shuffling the cards real quick. Alright, so we're going to take the top one and just discard it, and then we're going to do the others. So we have five of them. We need to survive, and we're actually doing one now because we're at zero stamina. So each survivor discards one food or one meat. We have neither, so don't have to worry there. Each survivor spends a water, so we're going to do that. This is actually the same card we just had last night. We go up to eight stamina. And each survivor not at a fire spawns a monster next to us. So. I'm uh, going to just grab another monster, and then we'll put him there. And just trying to pause for a second. Okay, so um, we have eight stamina, and this is a food, so I'm going to spend one to go grab it before we head back. And we got a food, so happy about that. So then I'm going to go two... Three, four, five, six, seven, and then uh, eight. So all of our stamina just to get out of dodge, but there's nothing I can do. We at least have a food. So uh, now we're gonna draw our next card. Each survivor either suffers a sickness damage or spends a food in the water. We don't have a food in the water, so we take a sickness damage. And each survivor, we're going to gain seven stamina because we're not next to the fire. Uh, the fire burns out. So um, what we do in that situation is we flip this over to show the fire burned out. And the only way you can start it again is you have to bring wood to it. And we don't have a wood. And then uh, each monster moves two spaces towards us. So one off camera is moving two. Uh, this one's gonna move two. This one moves 
two, two, and then of course this one intercepts us. So let's figure out what 84 is. And 84, Resource, resources cannot be spent to reroll dice. Oh, I'm sorry. Feral woman. So we had the feral man, now we have the feral woman. Um, oh, we get to resolve an exploration card if we win this. But she hits us pretty easily and has two health. So let's go ahead and roll. Alright, so two for her, so she misses, and then a six for us is not enough, even with a plus one. So um, nothing happens, and then the two means she's going to go north, and so we'll move her one over. Okay, so it's our turn. We have seven. I'm going to spend one to spend my two pelts, and let's make this leather armor, which is 90. I think we need it because we have a lot of monsters on the board. Uh, just being a little proactive here. The leather armor. During combat, you may discard this card to prevent one physical damage. I actually think that's pretty cool. So we have one, two, three, four items, and then two in our inventory for six. Um, okay, and then we get actually another one of these. So we got a pickaxe. And I'm realizing I forgot to draw another one because I'm supposed to have four, a wooden cage. So we, those are the items we have to build. Uh, torch was also one of them. We have six left. So I'm gonna go one, two, three and grab this item. And it says 28, whatever 28 is. One, two, three. So let's go find 28. It's that flute again. So we can move each beast feature token within three spaces of us, one towards us. All right, well, we have it for now. Um, I was hoping for a food or a water. This was not um, any good as far as I'm concerned. It was the worst possible outcome. Okay, uh, I still have three stamina. My fire is out. So I need wood. So I'm gonna go two, one, and then pick up this wood. Or otherwise I can't, I have to, you know, I have to make the fire or otherwise it doesn't do me any good to be at camp. So we're gonna draw the next card. Each survivor discards a water, we have none. Each survivor spends us food or we suffer a damage. We do have food. So we got lucky there. We have no food and water left now. And we gain eight stamina, so no bonus for um, being next to the fire. Uh, each survivor not at a fire draws a threat card. Um, okay, so the threat card is... Made the fight. Spawn one monster token in your space. If you deal damage to it during this combat, it does not retreat. You heal one damage and fight a second combat against it instead. Okay, so um, it just says you heal one damage. So does that mean I get to heal a sickness? Because it doesn't show a picture of the damage. It just says you heal one damage. Yeah, those rule books are clear. Make sure that that pot smoking guy gets some help. Um, Look at this. The recover action says each survivor can heal one damage. So the word damage refers to any of these types of damage. So I think that this card's telling me that I get to heal any damage I want, including my sickness. So I'm going to interpret it that way. And that's how I will play this. So, 
Oh, I gotta get the monster. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, what am I supposed to do? All right, the monster is number 77, and it doesn't look fun. Um, I don't think a panther type creature of any kind, any type of cat creature that is the same size as me is worth engaging. A starving lioness is definitely not one of them. Look, a five hits me. Yes, we get one meat and two pelts, but uh, that's not good. All right, well, let's do it. And then this thing's gonna attack me twice, but only if I hit it, it says. If you deal damage to it during this combat, it does not retreat. You heal one damage and fight a second combat against it instead. Um, all right, so that eight is a hit for him. And the seven is a hit for us. I don't know if I care about that, but we hit it. And so then uh, it hit us, and so I get to heal one damage, and I guess I'm healing the um, the physical damage. I mean, I know my ability is I can heal physical damage. You know what? I'm going to take the physical damage and heal the sickness because I can't heal sickness on my own. But now I'm forced to fight again, so I might get another physical damage. And I did not. I rolled a 2 for her and a 10 for me, and I actually did a 2 damage to her because of my uh, tomahawk, she's actually one away from being dead. Um, but she now retreats, and per the rules, the direction she's going is north. Okay, I'm finally done with my nighttime, and I have eight stamina, I have no food, no water, and I'm gonna go one, two, three, and then spend a wood for four, One, two, three, four. So I'm down to four stamina, but I get to flip this over and get a fire back. So now the big debate is, is do I start running for the water? Uh, there's also a beast along the way. So I can try to get food, I can try to get water. There's a part of me that says no. I just want to stay here and see if I can get rescued. By the way, the discard pile only has two knights left. Um, I am currently sitting on only, only physical damage and nothing else. Obviously, the very moment I have to eat or drink, I'm going to take two damage, one for each. Um, I'm going to spend three to do this doctor healing ability. So I need to roll a uh, eight to 12. And I got an 11. That was super lucky. I actually think that's hard. Um, but yeah, I am now fully healed. So I was able to heal that sickness through the other card, and then I took the physical damage from the lion, and then I repaired the physical damage. So I'm sitting on one stamina, and I'm going to go to the knight with that. Each survivor spends a food, so we now suffered a food damage. We're hungry. Uh, we gained seven stamina, so we're up to eight. Uh, move each... Monster token two spaces towards the survivor, and then spawn one monster token in a space adjacent to the tribe leader, even though we are next to a fire. So a monster is going to spawn next to us, and then every monster is moving two towards us. So we got one, two here, one, two there, one, two here, and then these two are both going to attack us. So let's do the one we know of first, 85. 85 is which one? That is the feral man. Um, he is almost dead. And he only gives us a pelt. So we don't even want to fight this guy. He doesn't even give us a good reward. Um, and he's hitting us for 10. And we hit him for 9. So we at least killed the feral man. Um, and we get a pelt. Uh, whippity do, right? Nobody cares about the pelt. So he's out. And let's not forget our pelt. Um, he hit us. So I can prevent one physical damage. But I think I'm going to just hold tight with that. And then um, let's do this one. It's a 79. Oh, that's Indiana Jones. All right, 
right? This is that skull guy. And if we would have had the skull decoder ring, we could actually, I think, resolve this. Maybe it's just exploration cards that you get to do that with. But that's a really good question. Like, could I have gone to 80? You know, the monster at number 80. I sort of doubt it. But anyways, here we go. He has three health. And unless we have a treasure, we're not going to get anything for this. All right, our two misses and his six misses. So um, he's going to retreat to there. Okay, so now it's our turn. We have eight stamina, and I'm going to spend... We have a physical damage, and we're hungry. So I'm going to spend one, two, three. I'm down to five, and let's roll to see if we can heal that physical damage. And I rolled a nine, so I do. I heal it again. So then I have five stamina left, and I'm actually going to stop. We're going to stay at the camp and get rescued by these uh, radio people. And I'm surrounded by monsters. Not sure I like that, but let's see what it says. Each survivor discards two water. That's good because we don't have any. And then uh, one of our things turns to physical damage. So our hunger became physical damage. So uh, right now, this is our situation. We have one physical damage and two full health. So I'm, I'm sort of happy with that. Uh, we only gained six stamina, but we had five, so we're actually all the way up to 11 now. And move each monster token three spaces toward the nearest survivor, not at a fire. <laughs> Otherwise, we would have had massive battle time. So thankfully, that saved us. Hey, guess what, folks? We survived. We've made it further than we did the first two games. Thank you all for your suggestions on what to do. And I'm really glad I didn't listen to any of them, and I just did what I wanted to do. <laughs> So uh, I really appreciate it, and I appreciate all of you for your sense of humor. I do read a lot of your comments, um, and I do try to interact with you guys even though I don't know you, and it's always out of kindness of my heart, I promise. Um, I do have a great sense of humor and sarcasm and all that stuff that goes with it. Anyways, thank you. I'm so excited. We are finally getting to Quest 3. Let's see what it is. Drum roll. Ding, 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 ding. I'm going to focus. Bright lights and the roar of engines drives you from sleep. Shouting soldiers surround you. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, announcing that your rescue is at hand. Then they shoulder their rifles and take aim at you. <laughs> oh, why did I figure that might happen? Move all survivors to camp. Okay, we're already there. Then spawn special monster token 86 at camp. That enemy will lead to the end of the game. I do not think it is a unicorn and a fairy with pixie dust. Uh, let's find out. 86 is going to make the treasure hunter look like... Uh, maybe I want the feral man back. Kill team! <laughs> they hit me with a five. Lethal. It does not retreat. Reward. All survivors win the game. And its health is two times... Okay, he only has two health because there's only one of us. So there you go. There's one advantage to playing a solo game. This guy is going to be a little bit easier. Um, he needs a 10 or better to hit. So that means if I hit him with my tomahawk, I kill him. So I just need to hit and I win. Um, obviously, he's going to be able to hit me pretty easily. So this is going to boil down to die rolls. This is like um, that Hitler game where you have to kill Hitler. I can't remember what it's called, but you play for like an hour, and then at the end, you have to roll a die, and you either win or lose. That's sort of how this feels right now. So let's, um... Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh my gosh, look at that roll. I'm ready to retire. I, I should have played Powerball and Mega Millions. I really should have. Um, okay, it does hit me, but we easily absorb that hit. Because, you know, we only have two damage out of the three. And we actually needed a fourth to die. And there you go. Perfect roll of a 12 against the kill team. You saw it here. I will never do that again. I promise. And this kill team... Dead. We have beaten this 
awful scenario. Um, it's still an awful scenario. <laughs> I don't like it. I will never play this scenario again. And when friends come over to sh ask me to show them, I don't, I guess we'll do this one, but I'm just not a big fan of it. Um, with that said, where is, just a little sneak peek. I will be uh, moving on and uh, doing more with you. Uh, the next scenario is going to be called Blind Trials. You have no... I'll read this again in the next video, so if you guys want to stop, you can, but you have no real idea how you got here or where here is, but a quick search of the camp provides more questions than answers. You find bullet casings, trampled and destroyed supplies, even what looks like old bloodstains. Something bad happened here within... I'll see, this is May of 72. The other one was... April. So this is a month later. Something bad happened here within the last few weeks, if you had to guess. Fresh tracks lead away from the camp, so someone must have survived the massacre. Perhaps you can find that survivor. And so um, this is this is very cool. Okay, there's a lot of stuff I haven't liked about this game, but, but this is where it is the cool part. So we know that those bullet casings in that battle was because of what we just did in scenario one. Okay, very excited. Um, I'm going to get this uploaded for you guys to watch because I have to prove that I actually finally beat this scenario and um, I'll get this set up again. Uh, we're using the same tiles. It's actually the exact same setup. So these, um, uh, this stone tablet, for example, we really didn't get to use it, but this next scenario we might. So um, stuff like that. Uh, we don't get to keep our items because as you just saw, it's a completely different person who's waking up at this camp that where a battle just took place. And I rolled a 12, by the way. That, he left that off of the notes. That, that's going to be forever in the stage two part one. But anyways, thank you for watching, folks. I'm very excited. We beat this thing. And uh, I'm going to, as quickly as I can, we're going to set up and do uh, scenario two. Thanks a lot for watching.